My name is Jeff Ullman. I'm the director of the Irrigation Center and the Mechanization and Irrigation Program Lead at the Rwanda Institute for Conservation Agriculture, RICA as we call it for short. Um, I'm also presenting on behalf of Richard Ferguson and Ron Rosati, our two vice chancellors. And I want to give you a little bit of background into the innovative educational approach that RICA uses uh, for developing a sustainable agricultural future in Rwanda and East Africa. So RICA was established as a partnership between the Rwandan government and the Howard G. Buffett Foundation. And here you can see Mr. Buffett and President Kagame. And this was based on the need for an experientially oriented educational institutes in East Africa that's focused on conservation agriculture. Um, this vision recognized the need uh, in the workforce for higher education graduates in agriculture who are knowledgeable of how to do things in the field as well as having sound knowledge of agricultural theory and concepts. Uh, the guiding framework was developed in conjunction with the Ministry of Agriculture's strategic plan which includes a focus on upgrading technology, increasing productivity, improving marketing and value-added processing, and the development of agricultural support services. So before we go uh, any further, I want to give you a quick overview of our campus. It's 1,300 uh, hectares, and hopefully you can see the pointer here, but this lower area is what we call first-year farms, which I will talk about in a little bit, where the, the students are broken into different houses that are then model farms. This area is residential housing for faculty and staff. These are the older students. And we're completely off grid. Up here you can see the solar fields and we also have our own water, wastewater systems. And then to the right, you can see our different enterprises. We have six of those on campus. This area is our dairy with our dairy pastures up here, poultry and swine. And these comprise our animal operations. We have our fruit and vegetables, as well as our ruined forage. And then we have food processing, that's in this area. And then over here, we've got mechanization irrigation, which is my lead. Here you can see there's a small training pivot and we have a couple large pivots to the, uh, the right off screen. And here's some drip fields. So this kind of gives you a, an aerial overview. Um, we're a little bit more progressed now with uh, construction, which shows here, but it gives you a pretty good uh, background on what it looks like. So essentially conservation and agriculture is recognized by RICA as central to the long-term sustainability of the sector in Rwanda and throughout East Africa. This preservation and enhancement of soil quality is a key component uh, for crop production and profitability. And while RICA follows the basic principles promoted by FAO, minimal soil disturbance, uh, maintaining soil cover using crop residues, cover crops, and crop diversification through rotations and intercropping. Um, we've expanded this definition, and I won't go through all of that right now, but it also includes one health principles to cover a wider portion of the agricultural sector. And for those of you who may not be familiar with one health, it's an integrated unifying approach to balance and optimize the health of people, animals, and the environment. So, <clears throat> excuse me. So what we offer is a bachelor's of science in conservation agriculture. And this is a three-year program. And it's broken up into three 14-week terms uh, in each academic year, which are roughly congruent with our three growing seasons that we have here in Rwanda. And although this is a three-year program, it was developed to be comparable to a four-year program elsewhere. Um, students take standard classes in math, science, communications, and other relevant fields to gain a strong academic foundation. However, what sets RICA apart is that we have a strong focus on experiential hands-on learning. And this translates to about half of the credit hours that the students take, um, taking place outside of the classroom, either in the field or in lab type settings. So here's an example on the left is uh, one of our former faculty, Fritz Longo, who is uh, teaching the students uh, proper mango harvesting at the proper stages. And then here I am at the right, uh, we're looking at infiltration in the soils using a double ring infiltrometer. So one of the other things that we have uh, in our curriculum is a number of threads. As I mentioned, conservation, uh, agriculture, and One Health. 
that weave their way throughout all the courses. We also have an emphasis on communications and entrepreneurship. Um, here you can see on the left are the students are marketing their food to the local cafeteria uh, who is subcontracted by us. And uh, the picture to the bottom right is one of our recent graduates that during her internship, she helped set up an entrepreneurial um, project uh, for, for improving protein uh, to the community through fish. So I mentioned the smallholder farming at the small farms uh, earlier when I showed the map. And so the first year we have a fundamental year long course called Practical Farming or First Year Farms. And this focuses on smallholder crop and livestock operations. And so the students live on a model farm and they're broken up into four different houses. And with each of those, there are a number of teams. And so the first uh, term, each team has control of that as if it's a household farm. The second term, the house gets together and pulls their decision-making and they act as a community. And then the third term, they then work together as all the houses together as a cooperative. And during this time, they learn basic skills with tools, work with animals. They take care of some chickens. They have uh, dairy cows. And we start introducing different forms of irrigation as well. In the second year, the students then go up to an enterprise level. And again, we have a year long foundational course that focuses on the enterprise scale. And just for a reminder there, we have got the six uh, different enterprises. And now we're starting to move up and they're learning tractor driving, um, advanced veterinary skills, uh, different practices along the way. So here you can see sort of this, uh, um, you know, the, the difference between the small scale. On the right, we've got small scale uh, dairy that the students are taking care of. And then on the right, they move up to the enterprise where we've got uh, milking operations and we've got 40 dairy cows. Here you can see chickens. They start with their small chickens and then move up to, uh, this is a layer. We also have broilers. We have a thousand uh, layers and 700 broilers. Here we go from planting, small scale hand, all the way up to larger mechanized. And then here you can see from the food processing facilities, we also have a new brain center. So they start getting these larger enterprise level um, activities going on. And so then at the end of their second year and going into their third year, they start to break into specializations. And these are broken down into crop production, livestock production, food processing, and mechanization irrigation. And you can see here from my irrigation courses, they get a lot more hands-on skills of putting pipes together, maintaining center pivot irrigation systems. Um, and so these skills that are gonna help prepare, prepare them for the job market. And then for the last two terms in their third year, they have a six month internship. And this is a little bit different than most of the interns you get because they're um, supposed to be working independently and develop a capstone project that's beneficial to both the, um, the host as well as uh, for the students. And they get a lot of uh, skills in the different respective specializations. Here we've got one uh, where they're working with some food processing on the left and on the right, they were working with seed production and a, a clean room. And these all are done with uh, academic requirements. It's not your typical just uh, following your host around and chattering. And then when they come back, we also have workshops to fill in any gaps. On the left, we had a, 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 an instructor come in from the United States who taught advanced welding skills. And then on the right, we had some people also coming in and talking about uh, crop production and, and get, filling in uh, additional things that they didn't get in their original classroom setting. And then another component to RECA that's important to point out is that we have a, a US land grant approach where we have a threefold mission. So the teaching, which we talked about with very experiential learning, we also do research and extension and include the students in those. So on the left, we've got a food production uh, training session with local uh, farmers. And then on the right, this is one that I've been involved with. My intern uh, that I had working with me decided he wanted to get into poultry housing. We worked with chicken tractors and uh, chicken uh, coops. And then we teamed up with poultry and swine. And you can see on the, I'm in the uh, upper right-hand corner there. And on both sides of me are two of the poultry and swine 
And we've now developed a joint program between mechanization, irrigation, and poultry and swine with this NGO, where we're teaching the community uh, how to do go better poultry nutrition, and then working with the different housing practices that they have. And then we're turning this into a research project as well. I've also gotten some outside funding, working with sensor-based irrigation. So we've got a lot of different activities going on. So in conclusion, the impact that RICA, RICA is having is first and foremost from our teaching, we're contributing skilled entrepreneurial or entrepreneurial-oriented graduates to the regional workforce. But we're also advancing uh, agricultural practices through research and then finally through extension. And that'll be measured for the adoption of these conservation practices over time. So here we've just started. This is our first graduating class, which was this past August. And you can see the president came and visited along with um, uh, Mr. Buffett. And if you want any more information, uh, you can go to our website and always contact me as well. So thank you very much.